should be fine. Yep. Can everyone hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, good evening. Welcome to the Committee on Ordinance uh, public hearing, Monday, April 12, 2021. Um, Madam Clerk, could you kindly read the roll? Chairwoman Ryan? Present. Vice Chairwoman Fido? Present. Councilman Narbushi? Yeah. Councilwoman Harris? Present. Councilor Miller? Present. We have five present and zero absent. We have a scroll. Thank you very much. Okay, we have, um, I'd like to recognize Councilman Espinal is with us this evening. Let the record reflect. Also, we have uh, Councilman Goncalves. We have Councilor Rachel Miller. I don't see anyone else. Okay, wonderful. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so we have two matters before us for public hearing this evening. Um, this is our opportunity to take testimony. There won't be any debate on this public hearing. We will have a meeting upon the rise um, where both matters um, will be heard in committee, uh, at which point we can have discussion and uh, perhaps a vote on, on both items, okay? So with that, um, I'd like to ask on, um, I'd like to actually recognize our clerk for this evening is uh, Tina Mastroni, who is with us, uh, Angela Harris, um, and we have um, Jacinia uh, Fajardo is with us. We have city solicitor Lisa Dinneman. Thank you for being in the house, uh, Councillor. We have um, Sean Bouchard, our policy director. With that, I think we're good to go. Um, Madam Clerk, would you kindly read item one into the record? Petition from John J. Harry Garrity, John J. Garrity Law, LLC, 2088 Broad Street, Princeton, Rhode Island, 02905, requesting a zone change for the property loca located on Assessor's Plat 101, Lot 793, 845 Allen's Avenue, from C-1 to M-1. Okay. Um, and um, before we begin to take testimony, I would like to um, ask um, for a motion to enter a substitution on this matter. Can I have a motion? Again, a motion. A motion. Again, motion. a motion. Second. Second by um, Deputy Majority Leader Harris. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I have it. So the motion is attached to this matter that is before us. On um, committee members, does everybody have the packet before you tonight? I do. Everybody's? Okay, great. Um, there is also a CPC letter that needs to be added to the record. I'd like to make a mo um, accept a motion to add the CPC letter dated March 23rd to this committee. Taking a motion. Motion made by Councilwoman Castillo, seconded by. Second. Councilwoman Harris, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I have it. CPC letter is, has been admitted. Okay. Um, we also have some written testimony that has been directed to the um, clerk's office on and filed by the deadline on and entered in. Um, I'd like to enter this as a packet of testimony. May I have a motion to enter a packet, a number of letters submitted to the clerk's office and circulated to the members of the Take Taking a motion. Motion made by Council uh, Vice Chair Castillo, seconded by? Second. Councilwoman Harris, all in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it, motion passes. Okay, so we have the matter fully before us. On, I would like to ask Bobby Ezar from the Planning Department to uh, step up and explain what this is about and specifically uh, uh, explain the substitute, if you could, Mr. Aza. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Robert Azar, Deputy Director of the Providence Department of Planning and Development. Uh, this is a matter, a uh, request for a zoning change 
to M1 for this piece of property that is on Allen's Avenue. Uh, it, is, it is just to the south of a large area. It's currently zoned C1. And uh, the <coughs> has previously been used as a, a commercial piece of property that had some offices. It was the headquarters of a business that had offices. It also had uh, some warehousing associated with it. Um, however, the legal use of the property was inconclusive in the records of inspection and standards. And the petitioner uh, wishes to use this facility for uh, primary uh, and some wholesale uh, operations. Neither one is allowed in the C1 zone. And even though there was warehousing previously on this piece of property, um, because the records uh, did not show this to be a legal use, uh, the petitioner is requesting that the property be rezoned to M1 so that uh, it can be used for, um, for what, what they intend. Uh, now, uh, this was reviewed by the City Plan Commission and uh, there was some concern that uh, the property, if, if it was just rezoned to M1 with all of the allowed uses of the M1 zone, which is an industrial zone. Uh, that excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Azar. May I ask if you are not speaking, if you could please mute your microphones. Uh, we're getting some uh, barking and other noises. Thank you. Please continue, Mr. Azar, unless that's you. No, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All so, right, we're not pointing any fingers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the um, uh, so at any rate, the um, uh, the petition um, uh, was originally seeking to to place some limitation on on the uses, and the commission uh, was generally in favor of of limiting the uses. Uh, the members of the commission felt that that C1, um, that they didn't wanna lose the, the, uh, the types of uses that would be allowed in C1. And you'll see in the letter that came from the commission that their recommendation was to keep the underlying zone C1, but to figure out uh, how to allow the warehouse uses. Um, there's a bit of a problem with that in the sense that the, the state zoning al law allows um, for zoning to be uh, more restrictive uh, through a footnote to the zoning map, but it doesn't allow for uh, zoning to be less restrictive. And so uh, all due respect to my, uh, my, my friends and professional colleagues on the City Plan Commission, um, I think their recommendation uh, would run them afoul of the state zoning law. And, and that might be something you could ask this solicitor about. Uh, but this substitution I believe is, um, is consistent with the spirit of the, the um, City Plan Commission recommendation and uh, also compliant with state zoning law and that um, the zoning change would be uh, to C1, I'm sorry, to M1, but it would, um, it, would prov it would be limited, the uses would be limited to medical dental office, office, personal services establishment, restaurant, retail goods establishment, warehouse and wholesale establishment. So those are all uses that are currently allowed in M1. It is a more restrictive as, as allowed by state law. These uses are consistent um, for the most part with uh, what you might see in the C1. The only difference being that the, uh, the warehouse and wholesale, which would be, um, you know, uh, which this property would be used for. Um, so with that, uh, I believe uh, that the city, uh, that, that this amendment is generally in keeping with the city plan commission's recommendation. And I believe that, um, that you should approve this. The one thing I had asked Mr. Garrahy to do, and I'm not sure that he did, uh, was to also include the map with this amendment. Um, did, did that happen? Is that on the copy that you have in front of you? It is if it's not. not. If it's not, it's just a simple matter. I could state uh, now if, if, you know, if, if you do move forward with approving this, just please uh, add a condition that the map be attached to the, um, to the petition. It's the same map that was attached to the original petition. 
There's no change in the in the map that was provided in the original petition. No. Okay. On um, Solicitor Dinneman, is that acceptable, or do we need to take any additional action? No, that's acceptable, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Azar. Up next, we have uh, Attorney John Garrahy for the, the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, John Garrahy on behalf of the commission. May I just interrupt? May I just interrupt? I'm sorry. My clerk just reminded me I didn't make an announcement. We're limiting testimony to two, two minutes to each, uh, to each uh, person testifying. Thank you. Please continue, Mr. Garrahy. Uh, and Madam Chair, I, I apologize for the barking dog. That was mine, who also caused me to break my ankle a couple of weeks ago. Uh, oh, you have I, a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I think Mr. Azar summed it up very, very well. This, this is a company that's been in Providence since 1949, now located at uh, Harris Avenue and Atwood Avenue. I think we've probably all been by it many times, probably haven't noticed it. It's a very limited, it's a wholesale tobacco and candy products company that wishes to stay in Providence. Uh, minimal activity It's really by appointment sales only. And the attempt is to use this building that's been used for banana grams and a picture frames company to be able to, to have their business located here. I think it's entirely appropriate. It's in a kind of a, a place where a couple of different zones merge, the uh, C1, the M1, and the R, R2 as well. But I think with the limitations included, it's really, a, even though it says M1, it's really limited to commercial uses and limited commercial uses at that. So I think it's entirely appropriate. Um, they, they have limited hours. I think it's a, a entirely appropriate. will help to keep a, a company that's been longstanding in Providence in Providence. Um, so I think it's entirely appropriate to make this change. It's again, a commercial use to allow their wholesale and warehouse business. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Carrahy. Um, let the record reflect that we have um, Councilwoman uh, LaFortune has joined us, and we also have um, Councilwoman Anthony has also joined us. So noted. Thank you. With that, I'd like to, um, we have Linda Perry, who has signed up to testify. Linda, are you with us? You have two minutes. Please identify yourself for the record. Linda Perry, are you with us? If you can identify yourself for the record. Linda Perry. Okay, I'm here. Wonderful. Sorry for the delay. I had a no problem. I had a technical issue. Okay, um, I live in Washington Park, as you know. My name is Linda Perry and I um, am the chair of the Washington Park Association, lived here for almost 40 years. Allen's Avenue is a mixed bag of issues, but this issue specifically is our small but very important commercial district. We have had um, two new businesses open up recently, one directly across the street, a taco place doing a great business. They lease the building. They actually was interested in buying that building, um, which was uh, under contract. Another building that recently sold that had been empty for a little while was the building directly abutter, directly to the north, which is a barber shop, and is going to have an ice cream parlor. So that is a staple of the neighborhood that's been there forever. Also across the street, the Portuguese market just recently sold and has two stories of housing above it. So our little important little neighborhood is, it's entirely inappropriate for a uh, M1 business to be there, which would be closed on the nights and closed on the weekends. It would bring absolutely nothing to the health, safety and economic benefit to our neighborhood. Um, we have a petition, we have, um, I had sent in a petition with all the abutter, um, that are uh, there in within the, the circle. It's the uh, resident just behind it to the west, the barbershop to the north, the business across the street, 
and um, what chair little um, our restaurant diagonally across the street. So the resident business owners want to see a business there that's going to bring vitality to our neighborhoods. And I really sent the petitions to you to look at. I've sent the map. I, the um, Is that my time? That's it. Uh, we didn't think it was that loud, but that's just <laughs> please wrap that. up. Yeah, you don't you don't have a sand. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna get uh, one of those. Yeah, please, please in, wrap. In closing, <laughs> in closing, I do want to say that the lot next door is a M1 lot that's owned by Balvor, and the uh, two lots next to it on the west side of Allen's Avenue are commercial lots, which are taken away of from our C1 over which could have been businesses. We have a Chinese restaurant, we have a catering company, we have Dunkin' Donuts, and we have Brass Monkey. It is our, you know, our commercial strip, so to speak. And um, an M1 district, just because it, the building looks like it could hold an M1, a warehouse, doesn't mean it needs to be a warehouse. It could be a vibrant commercial business that brings commerce to our, our neighborhood. And um, just so also uh, Bananagrams, they use that building as a HR office in a showroom. Their warehouses are down the street on Carolina Avenue, which they still are. They just consolidated their um, front office into their two warehouse buildings. And there's plenty of buildings that are empty the M1 district in Washington Park. Please wrap up your testimony, Ms. Perry. Thank you. I am. This is it. There's plenty of buildings that are available in the M1 district. We have a, uh, we live in an island of parking lots. We need to preserve our commercial district. Our neighborhoods are of utmost importance. And thank you so much for all you do. I appreciate it. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, we have on um, Timothy Moore. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Moore, are you with us? Timothy Moore. Yes. Can you hear me? Wonderful. We can. Please identify yourself for the record. You have two minutes. Thank you. Timothy Moore. I'm an attorney with an office at 50 South Main Street. Um, I've sent a, a, submitted a letter to you for delivery to the committee members. Basically, as the Mr. Gary, he said at the CPC meeting, he said the normal procedure for doing what they want to do would be to go to the zoning board. That's the way the law is set up. If you want to change the use, you go to the zoning board. You don't go get a rezoning, which violates the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is very clear that the strip of property along Allen's Avenue on both sides is supposed to be neighborhood commercial. By allowing this developer, owner, business person to apply for a zoning change to M1, even with the restrictions, violates the comprehensive plan, constitutes spot zoning, and sets a terrible example of people doing an end run around the ordinary statutory procedure. Therefore, and I'm also concerned that the revised petition uh, came in so late that I don't think everybody in the neighborhood was even made aware that there had been a revised petition to be submitted to you. So I think this, even this hearing is, I believe, invalid. But really the when you have a comprehensive plan, you have it very clear that along Allen's Avenue in this neighborhood is supposed to be C1. It's not supposed to be M1, no matter what you say or what restrictions you put. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, Doug Victor. Doug Victor is now promoting. Mr. Victor. Are you with us? You have two minutes. Please identify yourself for the record. Mr. Victor. Yes, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Thank you, 
Thank you very much. My name is Doug Victor, and I live in on Princeton Avenue for 36 years in the Elmwood neighborhood. And I uh, thank you for this time today. Um, my comment is in support of a sister neighborhood in the south side, Washington Park. I stand opposed to 845 Allens Avenue being converted into M1 zoning. Linda's testimony was a fine example of understanding the neighborhood at a neighborhood level, which is critical to these types of processes. We must also uphold the terms of the comprehensive plan. This commercial district needs to remain a commercial district, not be zoned manufacturing. The fabric of our commercial districts needs to be protected and developed as such. Turning buildings like the Bananagram building into manufacturing is an insult to the potential of Washington Park neighborhood to truly recover its neighborhood friendly commercial base. And with its building's close proximity to the many activities of the Port of Providence that have such a negative health impact to so many members of the community, reportedly the ninth highest asthma rates in the country, we must not let Lower Allens Avenue sprawl south, sprawl south up to the hill which is indeed closer to some of the most densely settled areas of the South Side. I thank, I thank you for your time today. Thank you, Mr. Victor. Next up, we have Sharon Steele. Sharon Steele has been promoted. Thank you, Madam Clark. Sharon Steele, you with us? Sharon I am Steele. I am Wonderful. so good to hear your voice and you so, good to be, so good to be here, Madam Chair, and hello to the committee. Thank um, you. Please I identify am, yourself for the record. Uh, Sharon Seal, president of the Jewelry District Association, speaking uh, on behalf and in favor of my uh, dear friend, Linda Perry and Washington Park. Um, I would like to um, uh, basically uh, comment that what Tim Moore stated um, uh, rather perfectly, in my opinion, um, sets up uh, everything that is wrong with this. The fact that the substitute uh, motion was introduced at the 11th hour, unfortunately, is the continuing saga of the lack of transparency uh, that comes out of uh, the planning department. Uh, and uh, certainly it is something that I uh, did not expect this evening, but lo and behold, uh, we have it again. Um, the CPC made recommendations uh, given what was supposed to be on the table this evening uh, that in fact uh, could not pass muster. Uh, so the substitute tries to clean that up. The basic situation um, is that uh, we are faced in neighborhoods these days uh, with uh, the following. If the planning department can upzone it, densify it, intensify it, then they recommend adding to a use uh, or doing the end run that uh, was created this evening with M1. Um, it is then left to the neighborhood leaders who work hard every day to make their neighborhoods more desirable for things like families, owner-occupied multi-units, entrepreneurs, new small businesses, therefore making these neighborhoods more valuable, basically in spite of what the planning department is trying to do uh, every day, it seems to us of late. So unfortunately, we are left tonight with the fact that this was not, in my opinion, uh, not Please a Please wrap opinion. up your testimony. Uh, I will certainly wrap it up. There is a transparency issue. So I am uh, really employing the members of the ordinance committee because at this juncture, it is left for you all to do uh, the right thing. And that is to protect our neighborhoods uh, because we at this juncture don't seem to have any other option. So I would strongly employ you to please say no. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Steele. Okay, um, that's all we have. Is there anyone else? That's all that have signed up either through me or um, the 
uh, sign up page. Um, we do have an attendee with their hand up. Okay, who's the attendee with the hand up? Angie, can you go to the attendee side? Mm -hmm. It is Ms. Perry. Okay, again. it's Ms. Perry again. Okay, I think uh, uh, Mr. Azar, is there any um, other uh, changes to this? Um, what is before us? Are we all set? Uh, we're, we're all set. Uh, Madam okay. Chair, may, might I have just 30 seconds to address the- Absolutely, absolutely. Zone, zoning change versus um, versus zoning um, vary. Uh, Mr. Moore, uh, correct in the sense that another option to get a use that's not allowed in a zone is to go to the Zoning Board of Review. Uh, but in order to, to do that, you'd have to uh, petition or apply for what's called a use variance. And a use variance um, is, a, is under state law, can only be granted by the Zoning Board of Review if they find that the property has lost all of its beneficial use. Clearly is not the case in this situation, and it's clearly not, has not historically been the case in most of the uh, variances that, that zoning boards of, of uh, prior ages uh, have granted. So, so uh, he's absolutely wrong when, he's, when he says that this is a short circuit to that process. This is actually okay. a proper process to go through. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, there being no further business on this matter, no other um, folks have signed up to testify. I'm um, concluding the hearing, the public hearing on item one. Okay, that brings us to item two. Uh, given the length of this um, matter, I'm going to um, ask for a motion to waive the reading of item two. Second a motion. Motion has been made by Vice Chair Castillo, seconded by Council Chair. Harris. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, on um, item two. Um, Mr. Azar, could you please explain where we are at with this matter? And hope, hold on a second. Let's back up. Let me get my documents in front of me. So we have a substitution on this matter. Um, for the record, substitutions can't be made public until they're voted on by the committee. Um, just to clear up that question that was raised um, earlier on um, this matter on um, um, there's a substitution on this matter, which we're going to talk about, as we did uh, talk about uh, the substitute in the prior matter. So I'd like to take um, um, entertain a motion, if I may, to substitute or enter the substitution on this item into the record. Motion. Taking a motion. Motion made by Vice Chair and seconded by uh, Councilman Narducci. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have it. This matter has been substituted. Okay, for discussion. Um, Mr. Azar, please explain um, what is before the committee on this matter. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this is a, um, uh, this came before you, uh, the, the rezoning of this, camp, of this campus came before you previously. You held a public hearing um, and now it is back before you had been a, a new submission by the petitioner um, with respect to the, the zoning of this. What was before you, just before you made that substitution, was the rezoning of, of several lots uh, in, this, uh, in this area, the St. Joseph's campus, to C2 and the, um, the, the amendment, of the substitution, original substitution, had a number of use restrictions attached to it. The substitution that you just voted on uh, keeps that all of that language in place with one exception. It actually strikes uh, from the uh, property list four lots that uh, were originally proposed to be rezoned from R2 to C2. Uh, those are plat 44, lots 234, 233, 240, and 241. Um, so once again, the, the current petition is does not include the rezoning of those lots. They would remain uh, um, R2 uh, with the historic district overlay. I'd just like to make one other point. Um, 
that that this uh, substitution, along with the substitution for the last item, neither one of those came from the planning department. So contrary to what Ms. Steele said, uh, this has nothing to do with the planning department. These were both introduced by the petitioners. I was just I, I just explained what what both of them meant. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we have uh, petitioner for the petitioner. We have Wayne Kazarian, and I'm not uh, sure if uh, um, former mayor uh, Ambassador uh, Joseph Palino would like to speak as well. But uh, uh, Mr. Kazarian, Attorney Kazarian, you have the floor. Please identify yourself for the record. Madam Chairwoman, Wayne Kazarian for the petitioner, 21 P Street. Uh, I appreciate the committees hearing this matter again this evening. We're here on March 11th. Uh, and after March 11th at the discussion on the rise, there were some questions which I think remained unanswered in the committee's mind. So we're back again. When we were here on the 11th, the prior petition had been amended to essentially cut and paste a number of different art residential uses in what was the old St. Joseph Hospital campus, which was originally zoned I-1. Um, when we looked at that, we felt that a more appropriate method of rezoning was to rezone, uh, as we discussed, to C2, but with a significant restriction on the number of uses that can be allowed. So the, the very limited number of uses that's shown in the petition is all that we're looking for. Uh, there are a number of uses in the C2 that are heavy commercial uh, that the petitioner is not asking for. One other matter that came up on the rise on the 11th was a question of funding. Uh, I do not believe that most in the audience recognize that the development of the proposed city school on the old St. Joseph's Hospital Tower area uh, is a project that has already secured funding. The bond issue for that was the last bond issue in 2020 uh, that, was, that was approved before this latest election. Uh, this is approximately a $75 million project. Um, Mr. Paolino is delighted to be able to, uh, to make this donation to the city. Uh, we have had discussions with the community garden. It's our intention uh, to finalize the donation of the community garden that requires another petition to the council because we need some parking relief uh, when we do that. But I think we're tracking well. I believe this is entirely consistent with what the neighborhood wanted, particularly now that the R2 zones are gonna be remaining R2. I do very much uh, appreciate Leader Harris's uh, involvement and input, um, both directly with me and through my client. Uh, I did try to reach out to Mr. Moore, who I understand represented some community interests, and we spoke. Um, he was not able to confirm that he had been formally retained by any of those community interests, but I did bring him up to speed uh, with regard to what we were doing before this meeting, and I'm hoping the parties he's speaking with uh, agree that this is a great approach. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Kazarian. Uh, next up, I have an Erlen Rochelle. Oh, oh, did Mr. Palino want to speak? Did the petitioner want to speak directly, or are you okay? Mr. Palino, Mayor Palino? Uh, I'll speak afterwards. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. I've just giving you this opportunity. Uh, Erlen Rogel, are you with us? Erlen has been promoted, Madam Chair. Erlen, you have been promoted. Could you please identify yourself for the record? Hello, Madam Chair and committee members. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yep. we can, and it's good to hear your voice. Thank you very much for having me this evening. My name is Erlen Rogel, and on behalf of the Providence Public School Department, we'd like to thank you, Madam Leader, and also Deputy Leader Harris, and the honorable members of this committee for your consideration of this application tonight. We'd also like to thank Mr. Pialino for his generous donation and for his shared belief that our students deserve not only buildings that are warm, safe, and dry, but that are also modern and state-of-the-art facilities that inspire and nurture tomorrow's leaders. At the request of the community leaders and with help from the city's planning department and the deputy chief of operations for the city, um, Providence Schools coordinated a community meeting in January so that neighbors could be briefed on the future intended use for these lots of land. As this committee is aware, the intended, the intended campus footprint encompasses only a portion of the land being considered tonight. 
At that meeting, neighbors raised concerns about a popular community garden, the intended commercial use of some of the lots, traffic and parking impacts. As we told neighbors at that meeting, that was but the first step in an intentionally cautious process to ensure enough time for community members and stakeholders to address concerns um, with the applicant. It is my understanding that through the city planning commissions and the city council's vetting processes, many of these concerns have been addressed thanks to the city planning departments, the city council staff, and the applicants due diligence and willingness to collaborate. This application is but the first step in this long process to provide our students a modern state-of-the-art facility. More community engagement will occur when design proposals are submitted later this year. Also, traffic, foot traffic, and parking studies are going to be part of that dialogue with neighbors. Again, I want to thank uh, you, Madam uh, Chair, and also the Deputy Leader um, for your due diligence on this matter. And thank you to the committee members tonight. And I, we appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much, Mr. Rochelle. Uh, Linda Perry. Linda Perry, are you with us? Thank you, Madam Clark. Linda Perry, would you like to speak on this matter? Linda Perry. Yes, Linda. here I yes, yes, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Wonderful. Identify yourself for the record, please, and you have two minutes. Yeah, Linda Perry from Washington Park, grateful for my other two minutes. Um, I would just like to join in with the neighbors there in Elmwood saying that it has been a tough row to hoe for this whole um, issue. And um, I am in support of keeping the uh, residential district intact, keeping the garden intact, and having comprehensive and collective discussions on how to preserve the neighborhood and at the same time bring a beautiful school to the neighborhood. It's a wonderful thing that Mr. Paolino is donating the property, but we also have to preserve and protect our neighborhood districts. And um, I recently spoke to someone at, um, at CLF and also at, um, uh, well, the, the issue of neighborhood main streets is vitally important to not only us, but other nonprofits that are um, very important to the city. So um, keeping our neighborhoods intact are, is, is number one to keep, um, to keep things moving in the right direction. <laughs> I'm going to uh, sign off and Thank you, Ms. Perry. Okay, uh, Karen Blazer. Madam Clark, do you have a Karen Blazer? Thank you. Karen Blazer, are you with us? CLF. Karen Blazer, are you with us? Karen Blazer. And one more time. Okay. Karen, yep, I'm, here. I'm here. I just had to unmute. Can you hear me? Okay, wonderful. We can hear you, Karen. Oh, you have okay. you have two mo two minutes, please. Okay. Identify um, yourself for the record. Okay, I'm Karen Blazer. And um I um I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find oh okay, here we are. Uh yeah, uh, so I strongly support keeping the peace and plenty community garden intact. Um, this is my second growing season. Uh, last year, I was able to significantly subsidize my grocery bill, having lost my job assisting in schools when restrictions began. And I'm one of around 30 gardeners, many of whom have been there for years. I haven't attended these last meetings, so you've probably heard a lot of this, but each of the 30 people are feeding their families as well as people advantage of the well-stocked free shelf. <clears throat> a significant garden project is underway which will end up supplying needed food to many more of the community gardens neighbors. A generous portion of the perimeter of the garden will be dedicated, dedicated food corridor of hardy vegetables and fruit bearing trees. And the food will be available for free 
to anyone who wants it. This is a unique and timely gift to the surrounding community, given the austerity many of us are facing under the restrictions implemented over this last year. Peace and Plenty Community Garden will easily end up feeding twice the hundred or so people it now feeds when that comes about, which is, makes it like 200 people. So, and I live in the neighborhood. Um, aside from the unparalleled physical nourishment provided by freshly grown vegetables, there's the mental, mental and physical well-being having our hands in the soil brings. Passers-by too appear to be inspired by the garden and often stop to ask what we're growing and how they can join. The experienced gardeners don't hesitate to help beginners like myself and everyone contributes to the garden's splendor by taking on tasks to keep things organized and beautiful throughout the season. Should we not treasure this place and make every effort to protect it and the ripple effect it radiates? And lastly, I say one more thing about the, the petition. Yes, please wrap up. Please wrap up your comments. All right. The plant agriculture is the last item on the petition. To this end, why not keep the garden intact and tap the expertise of the gardeners themselves? Um, and I added up the combined experiences of the gardeners over 30 years, and it makes 400 years of experience you guys have there. So if you add the expertise of the land trust, you couldn't find a more agriculturally sophisticated group of people, nor a deeper reservoir of wisdom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your remarks. Um, next up, I have Timothy Moore. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Moore, are you with us? I'm with you. Please identify yourself for the record. Uh, Timothy Moore, I have a law office at 50 South Main Street, and I've been helping the Elmwood Neighborhood Association address the issues of the rezoning of this property. And I do want to thank Mr. Kazarian and Mr. Paolino for the substantial changes that they have made in what was originally proposed to what is now before you, um, and including the substitute that was most recently added. Uh, keeping the lots on Whitmarsh as R2 is very important. Um, the neighborhood, I hope, one of the concerns for the neighborhood, obviously, is traffic and lighting and parking and having heat islands and not having landscape parking. So it would be nice if there was some way to ensure that the parking is not just going to be continue or would not be just an, a sea of asphalt with no landscaping. So. That's the only other request I would have, but otherwise, again, I want to thank Mr. Paolino and Mr. Kazarian for the changes that they made. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, Doug Victor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Victor, are you with us? Mr. Victor? Yes, can you hear me? We can, Mr. Victor. Thank please you. Identify thank you, Madam Chair. I, my name is Doug Victor. I live on Princeton Avenue, just two streets south of St. Joe's uh, property. Um, I also manage the community garden. And uh, I thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, while I appreciate the recent added exclusions to the zoning petition, there is a long way to go. It seems to make certain that what gets developed on the St. Joe's property is something or some things that will uplift the local neighborhoods and not bring in more quality of life challenges. I know I speak for the majority of my neighbors in this regard. This is a large parcel of property whose real, whose real development impacts will be felt for decades on end. We're trusting that the 32 year old plus community garden will remain a garden and will be transferred over to the Southside Community Land Trust as, as has been promised. The garden, for your information, will be part of an eight um, city garden tour this June organized by the Providence Preservation Society. So please sign up for that and come see the garden. This whole process has been quite complex and the petition equally as complex. One which has, foisted, has been foisted upon us and has been daunting 
to say the least, for too many neighbors to adequately understand and to ensure not to discourage ongoing consistent engagement. I am one who believes that robust neighborhood involvement is critical to assure that the current rezoning amendments deliver um, in ways that are a win-win situation all the way around. Oops. What is good for the neighborhood? Yep. Okay. What is good for the neighborhood? I will. Thank you. What is good for the neighborhood is good for the city. I ask us all to ponder this statement. Again, what is good for the neighborhood is good for the city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Victor. We have Jerry Fahey. Mr. Fahey, are you with us? Jerry Fahey? Hi, my name is Jerry Fahey. I live on Whitmore Street. Mr. Uh, Perry, you have two moments, two minutes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, most of the abutting houses on Whitmarsh Street are one families and most are owner occupied. My concern is the density is not to scale for the area, specifically the R4 zone. Whitmarsh is an R2 zone. The R4 zone for lots 252 to 255, they're smaller lots. And even the multifamilies, if you go up on P Street, they're, they're good sized lots with a lot of land in, in with them. And then also the C2 zone for lot 249, that C2 zone is coming almost halfway between uh, Elmwood and Broad Street. And I just feel a poorly planned high density uh, residential development is gonna ruin the momentum. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot of affluent people moving into the neighborhood that appreciate these historic unique properties. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone else who has signed up to speak? I was not contacted by anyone else. Okay. Nor did anyone sign up on the... Mr. Azar, are there any additional uh, changes we need to make before we conclude the public hearing? Madam I Chairperson? See... No, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Azar. Mr. Paolino, Mayor Paolino, Ambassador Paolino, Madam, would you like this? Okay. Please. My name, you is, have two minutes. My name is Joseph. My name is Joseph A. Paulino, Jr. I reside in the city of Providence. I work in the city of Providence. And um, I love the city of Providence. And this property, when I bought this some years back, I wanted to do something for the community at that time that I thought was needed in our city. But there was something very unique happened. The people that I wanted to do something with were not in favor of what my idea was. And I listened very carefully. And I worked with a council person out there Mary Kay Harris, who asked me to listen, I was happy to listen. And we talked about a number of different ideas and plans out there. What many people don't remember because 30 and 35 years ago is a long time ago, but I was at the groundbreaking when that lot became a community garden of 32 years ago. And I was there cutting the ribbon as mayor of the city of Providence with many of the neighborhood leaders at that time. And while I've owned this, the community garden representatives, boards of directors, the executive director have all called me and wanted to buy it. And I wouldn't, I will not sell that land. It's not for sale. What's gonna happen is once the zoning is approved and done, if it is approved and done, Councilwoman Harris and I are going to have an announcement and I'm going to donate that land. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm gonna donate it to the community garden people because they are the ones that whose blood, sweat and tears have nurtured that into something very special in that community, which is a model for other communities. And then when we talked about Whitmar Street, about making that property into R2, that's a no brainer. Happy to do that. There's too many vacant lots that we have in our city. And to be able to have continued housing there is something I wanna do. And I also listened to Councilwoman Harris when she told me that there were stories about a dollar tree going there. Well, quite frankly, a dollar show wanted to go there but I wouldn't put them there because that's not what the community wants. So I've worked with Councilwoman Harris. I've tried to work with the community. It's a tough struggle. I want to do something big for the city. I think donating the front building to the city school department is something big and transformative. 
There's going to be monies invested there to make it a school. What better use can we do in our neighborhood than to have schools? So let's nurture the, these kids, make sure they have good jobs, good homes to live in, and safe neighborhoods to live in. So today I'm happy to be a part of this dialogue. Um, I know whenever you're a developer, I don't care if you've been in politics or not, whenever you have the word developer, everybody has a suspected eye. And sometimes people feel the illusion can become a reality. Well, that's not the case here. We're gonna to continue to work with the neighborhood. I wanna thank the councilwoman for her persistence. And when I got turned off and wanted to run away, she kept on reaching out to me and say, come back, please, let's work this out. Because sometimes you get frustrated because sometimes you propose something and that's what everybody wants, but some people look at it differently and they think that it's anti what is for the neighborhood. I think we're doing everything right today and I just wanna thank you for the opportunity to work with you. I wanna thank the councilwoman, I wanna thank the city council. More importantly, I wanna thank the people in the neighborhood because they care about their homes, they care about their streets. And if I can be a help towards that, I'm happy to lend my name towards that. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Okay, with that, I'm going to conclude the public hearing uh, portion of uh, this meeting. Item two is now closed. Um, I would just like to uh, let you know you can stay on this uh, Zoom meeting. We're gonna allow the clerks to take some time to set up for the next meeting upon the rise. So please stay with us um, so that we can take up these matters and have our regular ordinance meeting on these two items that are before us. So um, your patience, please, as the clerk switch over. A motion to adjourn. May I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? So moved. Motion. Second motion. Motion made by Councilwoman Vice Chair uh, Castillo, seconded by Councilman Narducci and Harris. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. I have it. We are adjourned. Thanks for the reminder.